One major contributor to the overall complexity in software development is the cognitive load that developers face. Here are three simple design tactics that senior developers use to reduce this cognitive load. And I'm really curious whether you agree with the third one. Suppose we need to investigate a bug in this code. The call stack points to this method and immediately we have a question. What are valid values for these parameters? Looking at the method signature and the first few lines, there's no clear answer. If we check further, we realize if project were null, the code would fail, so null is obviously not a valid value. And thinking about max age in months, a negative value wouldn't make sense either. Furthermore, the method also relies on multiple members. Are they all mandatory? Checking the constructor doesn't give us a clear answer. Looking through the rest of the code, we see that nowhere null is handled gracefully, so these members seem to be mandatory. Okay, that took us a bit to figure out the constraints of this code. And more importantly, we now have to remember these constraints while continuing our investigation. This class is still relatively small, but imagine it would span a few more screen pages, would have more parameters and more dependencies. The cognitive load would increase significantly. Senior developers avoid this unnecessary cognitive load by making expectations explicit in the code using an old concept called design by contract. Simply speaking, design by contract means turning assumptions into expectations by explicitly checking preconditions, postconditions and invariants directly in the code. These expectations can be expressed using simple if-throw statements. Some languages provide built-in utilities to make this even easier. I prefer using my own utility called contract. It makes the intent of these checks crystal clear and the code even more expressive. You can find the link to this utility in the video description. Since it's so small and simple, I usually copy it into my projects instead of adding unnecessary external dependencies. A similar issue exists with data structures passed between modules. First, we have no way of knowing which validations were applied during creation unless we find all creators of these data structures and analyze their code. So we clearly want such data structures to have constructors or factory methods with validation built in to ensure only valid objects can be created. But even if we know that only valid objects get created, there is still a problem. What guarantees that this object stays valid over time? How do we know it wasn't modified somewhere else in the code? We would have to track its entire life cycle to be sure. Senior developers avoid this additional cognitive load simply by making domain objects and data transfer objects passed across modules immutable whenever applicable. Of course not every data transfer object needs to be immutable. For example, if it's only created to get serialized next, like a view model or a database record. But apart from these exceptions, immutability ensures that all constraints are defined in a single place and there is no need to track how and where the object was modified. And here's a bonus tip. Only immutable objects are safe to use as keys in hash-based collections like hashset or dictionary. And another advantage. Immutable objects are naturally thread safe, making them the easiest data structures to use in concurrent programming. Have a look at this code. A factory pattern was introduced to create a simple data structure. Now the factory pattern itself isn't bad, it's one of the fundamental design patterns every developer should know. But in this case, senior developers would simply create an instance with new when needed. And what about this service? It does nothing but forwarding calls. Of course, separation of concerns is an important principle in software design, but in this case, it's unnecessary. Senior developers would just use iPackage repository directly. Let's look again at an improved version of the dependency analyzer we saw earlier. It uses an upgrade cost calculator to estimate the cost of upgrading dependencies based on outstanding updates. Now we could imagine different ways to calculate this cost, but let's assume there is only one implementation of an upgrade cost calculator at a given time and it is only used within this module. That means this interface is needed. But anytime we read or change this code, we see the interface and think, Okay, I see this interface, but I know there is actually only one class, so I don't need to think about any possible variability. This interface just adds cognitive load without providing real benefit. Even though interfaces are important concepts to abstract from implementation details, in such a case, senior developers would clearly skip the interface and simply use the class directly. Now you might ask, but what about testability? How do I unit test the dependency analyzer in isolation 
independent of the upgrade cost calculator. The key question is, what exactly is the unit we want to test? In many cases, treating a single class as this unit is not the best approach. Instead, we should test units of logic, which can include multiple classes. Here the upgrade cost calculator is just an implementation detail of the dependency analyzer. If we expose it to tests, we make our test fragile to refactoring. So in summary, senior developers follow the Yagni principle. They don't create abstractions just in case, but only when truly needed. Cognitive load has various sources. One source is all the details we have to remember when reading and changing code. Senior developers apply these three design tactics whenever applicable to reduce the number of sources for cognitive load and so reduce the overall software complexity. And if you are curious about other types of complexity in software development, then check out this video.